Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today we are going to talk about how to fill a partogram. So in exams in the OSPI, partogram comes in two ways. Either you have to fill a partogram according to the data they give you, or you are given a filled partogram and you have to interpret it. That whether the labor is progressing normally or not. So now the first thing you need to know are the components of partogram. So partogram has three components, fetal, maternal, and the progress of labor component. So fetal component is this one in which there is fetal heart rate and liquor and molding. And then there is the progress of labor component in which there is dilatation of cervix and descent of fetal head and the length of cervix and the contractions per minute in oxytocin drops per minute. Then there are the um, maternal component in which there is the maternal blood pressure and pulse, drugs and IV fluids and the biochemical tests and the uh, temperature of the mother. So now before starting, you need to know a few things like uh, when to start a protogram. You have to start it when the cervix is 4 cm dilated. That is the mother enters into the active stage of the fir first stage of labor in the active stage. So. Then you need to know the that these lines, basically the wider lines like these ones, these are one hour apart and the narrower lines, these are basically half hour apart. The third thing is that these diagonal lines, the first line, it shows the, it's called the alert line and the second line is called the action line. The alert line is, shows basically the normal progress of labor that is one centimeter per hour dilatation as you can see after one hour uh, it became from four centimeter to five centimeter then after another hour it became six centimeter so this is the normal progress of labor and the action line is usually four hours apart and it shows that uh, if the graph of dilatation cervix crosses the action line then you have to take some action like like um, c-section so this is you need to know, especially in order to interpret the graph. So now let's start. The first thing you do is write the time. You fill this and then you write the time at which you are going to start the partogram. So I'm going to write time here. Let's say it is, it, it was 9 p.m. And it was, uh, the patient is four centimeter dilated. So in this graph you fill, it is the most important one the progress of labor component and you fill three things the first is the dilatation of cervix second is the descent of descent of fetal head and the third is the length of cervix the dilatation of cervix is filled like in as a cross is drawn as a cross and uh, you can remember it like cervix appears like a cross it's like an opening so you write a cross for cervix descent of fetal head as the head is round so you fill it with a circle and then length, you like measure it with your finger. So, so length is filled with a line. So let's say the cervix was four centimeter dilated. So this is four. You write, you draw four across on the alert line. The first mar uh, marking is always done on the alert line, uh, whether it's four centimeter or five centimeter, because uh, suppose the patient comes to you with 5 cm dilated, we will also always consider that the patient is in normal uh, labor. The labor is progressing normally. So we will draw it on the alert line as the alert line shows the normal progress of labor. And suppose the patient came, with you, came to you with 5 cm dilatation, so then you will draw the cross here on 5 cm on the alert line, not here, not here, here. And you will write the time here. So this is the way, okay? So here it will be 10. So this is the dilatation of cervix. Then you draw the descent of fetal head. So descent is uh, um, shown uh, written in two ways, either in palpables like five by five palpable on abdominal examination, five by five palpable, four by five, three by five or two by five or one by five. So let's say the patient was 2 by 5 palpable, so you draw 2, then the patient became after 1 or 1 by 5 palpable, okay? 
uh, if the view are given it in another way like in um in this uh, in stations like plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 0 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 then what you do is you write here plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 0 minus 1 minus 2 and minus 3 like this zero shows the level of physical spine above it is minus and below it is plus and then you can do write it in the same way like plus one or plus two so it depends uh, what data the teacher gives you and then you fill it accordingly whether if it is in palpables or it is in stations the third thing is the length of cervix suppose at this time 9 a.m the cervix was one centimeter dilated so you draw a line one and some people even like show its upper end by like a slightly uh, T shape so this is it so this is the progress of labor component okay now we'll come to fetal heart uh, the fetal component so let's say the fetal heart was 150 you can draw a circle or cross it doesn't matter then after half an hour 160 after half an hour it was 150 then 160 then this so it's like this then uh, the liker and molding so liker if the membranes are intact you write I for intact membranes. If the membranes are ruptured, then you can write R. And, and you can then tell whether the lichen color is clear or it is blood stained or if it is meconium stained. So C, you write C for clear. B for blood stained if it's red or M if it is meconium stained. So you write it here, let's say the lycra was clear, then after one hour it was again clear, then after one hour it became meconium stained. And then you can even write the grades of meconium staining 1, 2 or 3. Then there is molding. Molding is basically overlapping of the fetal uh, skull bones. So if there is no molding and you can feel the fontanelle and you can feel the gap between the fetal skull bones, you can feel the suture in fact, then you write zero, that is no molding. If the bones are touching, then we write one plus. If they are overlapping, then we call it two plus overlapping and not, and, and being able to overlapping, but when you touch it, you can separate it. So that is 2 plus and when overlapping but unseparable, then it's 3 plus. So you write here in molding, suppose there was no molding, first star, no molding, then there was plus one, one plus one molding, then we were 2 plus molding. So you write it in this way, then again 2 plus after one hour. So in this way you write it. Then here oxytocin and drops per minute. Usually we are given you give eight drops per minute or sixteen drops per minute. So you write it here. Then there are contractions per per ten minutes. So you write uh, you have to write the number of contractions in ten minutes. Like if there are one contraction, you fill one box. If there are two, you fill two boxes. If three, you fill three boxes. Then in next ten minutes, you fill here, and then and you. Fill whether the contract whether each contraction was mild, moderate, or severe. So, if the time of the contractions is twenty to forty second one contraction, then we call it mild and we fill it by diagonal lines. If it is less than twenty seconds, then it is then it okay. This was moderate, and if it's less than twenty seconds, it is mild and fill it with dots. If it is more than forty seconds. It's severe and we color the contractions. So let's say uh, the patient had two mild contractions, one severe contraction, one uh, moderate contraction in the first 10 minutes. So we feel it like this, mild, mild, and moderate. In the next half an hour in 10 minutes, the patient had one mild, one moderate, and one severe contraction. So we feel it one mild, then one moderate and then one severe contraction then if it has let's say mild moderate severe 
and another severe contraction. So we fill it like this. Then we write here drugs and IV fluids. If the patient is given ringer lactate or what, we write it here. Then blood pressure and pulse. BP is checked every four hours and pulse is checked every half hour. So let's say the patient had BP of 120 by 80. So you draw a line from 120 to 80 like this and draw arrows on both sides. And then suppose the pulse was um, 90. So you draw a dot here on 90. Then after half an hour, it was 110. You draw it like this. Then after half an hour, it was again 90. So in this way, you draw, you draw the pulse rate and the blood pressure. Then here it is the proteins, acetone and glucose in urine. You write here any positives or negatives, whatever. And you write the temperature here. So that is it. Thank you.